Hi, my loves. Welcome to the show. So one thing I wanted to bring up is the fact that we haven't been penetrated with any male energy in quite some time. This new season hasn't had any of it. And to be honest, I can't be having that. So let's change it up, shall we? Let's let's get right to it with our male guest for the new season, a noob. So Hanta, he is also known as Noob Face on the Instagram, and he's a quite, uh, mm, I want to say chummy, but like he has a British accent. So is that like what you say when someone's British? You're like, oh, they're quite chummy, huh? Oh, am I being way too cliche? I may be. Okay. He is really amazing. Just take a look at his Instagram. Like you should totally just, here's what you're going to do. Put this on pause. Go to the Instagram. Find him. N-O-O-P-F-A-C-E, Noop Face. And then just take a look at one of his recent posts. And you're going to be like, oh, oh, mmm, uh, oh, 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 mmm, mmm. I'm going to follow this fella. That That's what's going to happen. Amazing, right? And I've I felt the same way when I when I found him on the on the IG, and I was just really turned on by the work that he was putting out into the world, and the way that he uses his words, and he describes love and sexual intimacy and relationships. It's just really raw and real, and I feel like he doesn't hold back, and I really appreciate that, and I respect that, and. I rushed out to get his book, uh, which is called From the Universe Lips to My Ears. Beautiful, right? And the book is just full of even more gorgeous words and phrases and poetry. And it just really evokes the soul in such a, a gorgeous way. So I was really excited to have him come on the show and have a conversation about love and life and relationships. And I will say... It got a little, it got a little uh, more fun uh, once we stopped the record button. So I think that means this episode is just foreplay, and we're gonna have to have him back on for the next time. What do you say? Hello, welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. You sound good. You mentioned a little bit of a cold. Yeah, just uh, just the remnants of a cold still mm-hmm. there. It's that time of year. So I found you randomly. I'm not sure you know how it works with the Instagram. It might have been one of our prior guests, Amy Jindra, who follows you, or it might have been through Broken Isn't Bad. It doesn't really matter. But when I came across your profile, I was just like, oh my goodness, like I have arrived into something and it's beautiful (laughs) and it's fantastic. And I literally ordered your book like within a few days of finding you because I just am so enthralled by the way that you speak and the way that you communicate um, online. And I think it's really beautiful. And I'm really curious. First of all, your Instagram handle is Noop Face. W- what is that? <laughs> uh, okay, so my name is a noop. Mm-hmm. Um, so everyone's used to call me Noop uh, as a nickname. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from that, it kind of just for some reason, I, I don't remember how, but one day I signed up to something, I think it was MySpace or something like that, and I signed up as Noopface, and it just kind of just went on from that. Amazing. So Noopface on MySpace. Love it. <laughs> to the <laughs> Instagram. <clears throat> Excuse me? No worries. It's all good. So I was just kind of curious about that. So, you know, I mentioned in the intro to everyone to check out his profile and just kind of see how he brings such a beautiful poetic muse to form and further the way that I look at your words and the way that I embody them is there's this sensual imagination that comes through and so where have you always been a poet were you always writing in this fashion 
Uh, no, actually, I so I didn't ever envisage myself being a writer. It's something that came about. I would say, well, <clears throat> excuse me. I touch upon it briefly in my book, where I kind of I was going through this transitional phase in my life, and I started to read more writing, and I started to read more quotes and poetry and all that kind of stuff. So, like, uh, Rumi was a big influence for me. Mm -hmm. um, I read the Rizzer's book, which was really surprised me because I didn't expect it to be, you know, my cup of tea. Mm. But it was. Um, and then I kind of started to write my own stuff and slowly kind of slipped it in between quotes from famous people just mm -hmm. to kind of gauge how that would go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep, I know what you mean. I, I used to do that too. I'm like, okay, let's just put a little Wayne Dyer here and then maybe we'll sneak mine in and see if people like it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, 19 likes. They like it. Great. <laughs> Success. <We're in. laughs> Keep going. Do another one. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's how that kind of developed. Um, and then I, it was around 2017. At the start of 2017, I... I started to take myself a little bit more seriously and just put my own writing out there instead. Mm -hmm. So, but then it just kind of developed. I mean, my experiences have always shaped what I write and how I write it. So if you go back to when the book was written, it's to me, it feels really crass. Mm. Uh, it feels very kind of unstructured. Whereas my writing is kind of different now. It's more refined. Sure. So yeah, that was that. Yeah, what made you take the initiative to put it in a book? Because that's a, that's a big step to say, okay, I'm taking, you know, and, and again, you can look at 2017 version of you and you can look at your writing then in comparison to now and see the refinement in where you are now. But, you know, two years ago, there was a part of you that was like, let's just put this in a book. How did that even, how did you get to that point? I was pushed by several people, uh, not pushed in a bad way, okay. but in a good way to uh -huh. be like, our favorite kind yeah <laughs> the best kind mm. um to be like you should write a book or you should release it all into a book or which was even nicer is i would prefer a more tangible copy of what you've written mm. um, in a kind of paperback format so that i could kind of keep it for mm -hmm. sentimental value which was a nice thing for people to say yeah, I think so. So it was just kind of getting that encouragement, those those gentle, like good pushes, if you will, um, that made you to say, yeah, I'll, I'll put it in a book. And did you self-publish? How did this come to be? Uh, I did self-publish. Uh, I went through Amazon because I, I was contemplating going through the traditional publishing route. Right. Uh, but publishing poetry through the traditional route is difficult as fuck. Um, part of my French. No, say all the all the French. <laughs> but um, and on top of that, I was I kind of feared that, you know, I was just kind of starting up to gain a bit more momentum, and I didn't really want a publisher to be like, "Well, you can't post this, and you can't say this." So, yeah. So that's why I, I went the self publishing route. Nice ultimate freedom, essentially. Yeah, exactly. I love it. And how did you sync up with Broken Isn't Bad? Uh, for anyone that's listening, Broken Isn't Bad is another amazing Instagram account. Um, beautiful artist. I love the way that they infuse the cosmos, astrology, just really tapped in. So how did that connection come to be? <clears throat> so that happened. Uh, I stumbled across her work randomly mm -hmm. one day. And I thought, after looking at uh, photography pictures for my front cover, I decided I've got really poor Photoshop skills, but I decided to mishmash loads of photos together uh -huh. and create what I wanted to be as a front cover, um, which actually looked pretty cool, by the way, just to mm -hmm. throw that out there. Mm -hmm. um, and I messaged her and I said, could, could you do me some art for the book? And could also, could you do me the, the front cover also? And she said, yeah, cool. That's fine let me know what you'd like. And so I sent her the image for the front cover and she sent that back. Mm -hmm. uh, and with a fine, well, sorry, with a few tweaks rather, um, it was fine tuned and 
that's how that relationship happened. And I think I was, I think I was the first person to approach her for a book cover. So it was the first time she'd done it, which made me feel special. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, as it should. I feel like you kind of saw into her talent before a lot of other people had. Yeah, there's there's been another author that's that's also had a book cover made, a uh, similar kind of poetry vibe afterwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, his book was released at the end of last year, I think. So it's... Um, I've seen that one. <laughs> is it any good? I like yours better. <laughs> I didn't reach out, I didn't reach out to him to be on the podcast. So there's my answer, or there's your answer. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a little different. Um, and I, I like your cover better. Um, cause if for anyone that's listening, I'll put uh, a little photo or just, you know, look it up yourself. It's from the universe lips to my ears. And the, the cover is very like, if you saw it, you'd be like, Oh, that's very Danielle. Like if I feel like she's like doing this image right now, it's like this like woman with like very fiery hair, like up in the cosmos kind of just listening. And there's like a beautiful sun and the waves and the moon. It's like, oh yes, yeah. That's I like that's. I d- I'm not sure how I, I kind of envisage that, but that's what my uh, my consciousness conjured up. Mm. Yeah. So how do you connect to your consciousness? What is that process like? Um, <clears throat> I was having this conversation the other day that. Um, so I I tried conventional meditation. Mm-hmm. You know, like sitting down, right? Uh, sitting in the mountains forty days without eating, that kind of shit. Ah, uh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it just—I don't know. Like after doing it for like two years straight, and not like finding some kind of solace, but not finding what I wanted from it, mm-hmm. it just wasn't what I want. So, sorry, it just wasn't what I wanted. Rather. Mm-hmm. But more, I'm focused more on moving meditations that are day-to-day tasks. Um, so like being creative or cooking or whatever, anything that takes your mind away from your physical being where you can traverse somewhere else. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And that's um, something that I talk a lot about as well. I actually have my own meditation teacher training and part of the training is that we actually don't do that. There is no going to the mountain. There is no, uh, you know, fasting for 40 days, if you will. Um, If you want to sit for 20 minutes in the corner and ground yourself, go for it. Like I, that counts as part of the training if you want to do it, but that's not why I'm teaching it. And why I say that is, yes, it may work for some individuals, but I find that more of us that have more of the creative side, more of us that are more physical in nature, that want to move, that want to be, um, that we, we need to infuse meditation into the arts and into things just like what you said, cooking and whatnot. And finding ways to connect with our consciousness through our breath, through activities that feel real. Yeah, definitely. I, when we're on, we're on this planet, so mm-hmm. we need to play by human rules. Yeah. And um, I feel like, you know, those things that remind us of those human experiences, like, um, and not to go into it too early, but, you know, like sex and all the, the artistic things. So like writing for me, but painting, cooking, um, you know, they, they develop those aspects of ourselves without us having to sit down and mm-hmm. you know, sit there for 40 minutes or an hour meditating to try and separate our mind from our, our meat soup. Right. And it, it just, you know, I, I, I think it's a, it's a strange approach. Again, if it works for you, keep working it. I adore you. However, uh, you know, I just feel like sitting and putting myself in a space where I'm mindless for 40 minutes is really no different than me sitting with my phone and being mindless on social media for 40 minutes. It's kind of like, you know, uh, yeah. yes, social media, you're, you're kind of getting a feed of other people's energy and it could trigger certain things, but there's still not quite this essence of self connection. And I feel like what you're sharing and what I feel is this, how can we connect deeper to who we are without this mindlessness? Yeah, absolutely. I feel it. So, okay. So you mentioned the sex, so let's get into it. Um, no premature of anything here. So clearly your writing is very sexually based. Um, it's very much driven through the art, through the partnership, all of those things. How did you feel comfortable even starting to express yourself in that way? Uh, it took me a while. 
Mm-hmm. It definitely took me a while back to, to uh, gauging people's responses and that kind of stuff mm-hmm. and pushing boundaries and things like that. Like how far could I actually go with what I post and what I say and what I write, uh, regardless, you know, if I'd written it beforehand and was curious as to whether I was going to post it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, but nowadays, um, and not to be blunt about it, I don't really give a shit if people yeah. <laughs> like it or mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm not posting it for people to like it. I'm posting it because it's expressive for me, and I, I want to, I want to share that out. Um, and it always helps when people are always like, you know, thanks you. They message me or they email me and they say thanks. That really helped in this situation, or I'm going through a really rough patch. Um, and that helped um, and to me that's still overwhelming um, because I don't think my words have that much of an impact so whether it's about like relationships or sex or the universe um, it always just seems to help people yeah. so that that kind of fuels me it does. I mean, when I found you, it was at a time where I was going through a breakup. And sometimes when we go through breakups, we, you know, of course, see the reason why we're breaking up with the person and how it's no yeah. longer going to be. Um, but there was also a part of me that was some, and I do, you know, I think a lot of people uh, do this. We get into the space of maybe romanticizing what was, or maybe kind of being like, oh, like, you know, remember when he used to do this, or this was so lovely. And then I read, I came across your profile and I read some of the things you were talking about. I was like, my person never did that. Or like, you know, the person that I, when I was like, noticed myself, I was like this, you know, like, like when I would read your words, I'm like, oh my gosh, these are the words that embody what I was trying to justify someone else as, but that was really never the relationship and that's okay. And it gave me permission to let go of any past relationship, let go of any partnership that wasn't aligned, that wasn't in current completion and just let it be because when I would read your words, I would be reminded of what my soul craved in a partner and what it was um, opening up into for what could be for the future and the potential. And it really brought life to that for me. Sure. I think for a lot of people, I mean, for myself as well, they, before they were my experiences, I was writing about experiences that I hadn't had. So I was manifesting those experiences. Mm. So as I was going to ask you um, if they were based off of someone. So a lot of this was just you having feelings and you being in a space of conjuring up expressions that were just feelings. Sure. Yeah, that was right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, that was right at the start. Um, they weren't all my experiences, uh, but they they were just something that had manifested inside of me that I needed to get out. So that was like 2015 and 2016. Uh, and then I started to manifest those experiences. And uh, the more I wrote about the things that had manifested, the more stuff would manifest uh-huh. from it uh, because I was materializing it through Instagram or Tumblr or wherever I was posting it. Mm -hmm. Um, So that kind of, the energy was out there at that point. Um, So it just kind of spiraled on, kind of snowballed from that. That's so amazing. I love that through your posts and your words and your expressions, it did manifest. And also like you kind of mentioned putting it in the public eye, so to speak. And, you know, just, like you said, I don't give a shit. Like I'm putting this out because this is what I'm here to express. This is what I'm here to say. And I don't need your validation, but of course, when it comes through, like you said, it's overwhelming and it's beautiful. And I know that you're grateful for it. So through the art of you expressing, you manifested a lot of this to form. And so what was that reality like when you started to see some of this materialize? Uh, I I think anyone that has ever manifested anything knows that when it does hit you in the face you never realize that you were manifesting that (laughs) Mm -hmm. so I had gone through that experience uh, and I I didn't really realize that I had manifested that by writing about and even now I mean I I write about things um, or I manifest things or I try to manifest things anyway but um, and they just happen and I don't I'm not you know, I don't really contemplate the thought that I was manifesting that six months right. ago and now mm-hmm. it's happened to me. Yeah. So, 
No, that's amazing. I, I, I do feel, you know, manifestation, of course, is a hot topic, a lot of buzzwords around it. Um, however, when you look at it just in the way that you're sharing about it right now, so you're not looking at it so literally. It's more just I'm existing, I'm expressing, I'm being, and therefore things come to form as as such. Is that how you look at it? Sure. Well, I like a few years ago, I would concentrate intently on manifesting something because I'd always had the uh, the kind of notion that I would, you know, how you have to focus on it. You have to have laser sight mm. on the vision mm-hmm. of what you want for it to manifest. But then I realized that there was no emotion behind that. Mm. So you need to have the emotion. You need to you kind of need to feel it. You need to smell it, touch it, whatever for it to actually manifest. Otherwise you you're, your soul doesn't believe that it exists and that it'll never come to pass. That's so true. So bringing in all the senses to awake and evoke the soul in such a way that it starts to kind of get the scent or the hunger, if you will, to bring it to you. Yeah. And it goes back to being, we're human. We have to live by human constraints, human rules. So we use our senses to bring our manifestations to life. I really like that. So what would you say right now is a really big manifestation that that came to be that you're super grateful for? Uh, I would say my last major partner was definitely something I had wanted in my life uh, to transform me, to make me better. Um, So I'd always wanted that. Mm. So. That's amazing. And so, and, um, and it shifted since then? Uh, right now, my focus is on more work related stuff. So I am currently working on a second book, um, which will be a different kind of book. It won't be a poetry book. Okay. So oh. can you give us a little bit of a hint? Project. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Top secret over here. <laughs> We don't want to mess up the, the process, so we'll just, we'll just have us at the edge of our seat. When I've got a little bit more written down, then I can share a little bit All more. All right. All right. We'll let you, we'll let you uh, keep stirring behind the scenes. And, uh, you'll just keep us in waiting. Uh, okay, cool. So you've got that. And then, okay, so here's another question. Let's shift gears. Let's go back to kind of the, the space of being human, if you will, and just kind of the space of dating and relationships. Um, I, I would love more of your take on it. So a big thing, like I had mentioned, when I came across your account and your book, it reminded me, you know, not to settle. And it's so easy for us to do that because you know, we crave love, we crave partnership, we crave also normalcy. For me, sometimes it feels better to be in a relationship or be in a partnership because it almost feels like, ah, like I'm I'm more just normal. People will leave me alone as opposed to sometimes when I'm single, I feel like I'm more vulnerable or I'm more subject to, well, why, you know, are you still single? Are you still dating? You know, and it just, it leads to more questions. So I think, you know, and, and I'm not the one to settle at this point in my life, um, but many people do. And why, why do you think we, we settle so much? Uh, I've got several views on, <laughs> on that, but uh, I would say security is a big one. Uh, people really just don't want to face themselves, um, face their own flaws and face their own insecurities. So having a partner just, just makes them feel more comfortable with who they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially if they're settling as well, because it, it'll be a partner that, you know, kind of like either massages their, mm. their ego or just a partner that is there regardless of how shitty they can be. Um, mm. Not saying that that's the case for all people, um, but that would be one of the reasons. So I, th- I would say that's a major reason. Yeah. Is security. Yeah, security. So how can one feel secure on their own? Uh, I, I mean, I don't like to spout like, uh, you know, all the self love, that kind sure. of stuff. Uh, I'm a firm believer more in conflict resolution. So communication, I wasn't always a great communicator and I still think I'm flawed in many ways. Um, but I think to appreciate yourself is to look yourself in the mirror and be like, well, you're full of shit. And <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> to be so blunt about uh-huh. that. 
Um, but you know, this is where you've, and many people don't want to do that to be like, this is where you're flawed. This is where you suck. Mm -hmm. So this is what you need to work on to be a better person, to improve your friendships, your relationships, your friendships, uh, sorry, your relationships with your family, all those kinds of things. Um, so that's it. People don't want to face that. I didn't want to face that. I mean, I'm a Leo. I'm <gasps> you're a Leo. So am I. <laughs> Little, little spark. Love it. <laughs> anyway, keep going, Leo brother. Um, yeah, no, so, so that's it. I think a lot of it is confronting yourself, being like, this is where I'm flawed and this is what I need to work on to be better. So mm -hmm. self-love only really comes after you could do that. Yeah, I've, I, I definitely felt the same way when I first kind of got out of my – the rock bottoms if you will initial messes and kind of was exploring this world of self-love and personal development and whatnot I kind of looked at it all and I was like what the fuck like what is this like you want me to do what like I hate myself right now like I judge myself constantly like I am a hot mess and when I would read some of the things that would be shared around this journey to self-love I'm like Oh, like this is the journey to just wanting to throw up. So I I kind of came up with what I called like self okay, which is very similar to what you're sharing. Is kind of I would just look in the mirror and be like, okay, what do we got? Like what do we got? Let's yeah. let's unpack this. Let's just look at it from kind of a neutral space and just, you know, openly look in the mirror and be like, this is where I feel. I think that's the issue when you've got so you look in the mirror and you you don't think you think the other person thinks you're flawed mm -hmm. um so that so so let's say they broke up with you mm -hmm. and you're like well i must be ugly or a shit partner or you know i wasn't giving them enough uh someone else is going to give them more all those kinds of things so i think with my promotion of self-love it's more to be like okay well take a step back it's nothing to do with the other person <clears throat> excuse me Mm -hmm. in that regard but it's more in the sense that what did that person do for you as opposed to what did they do to you mm -hmm. so after I'd come out of my relationships you know I was hurt upset or of course and whatnot but it was more to do with the fact that okay well you know my last major partner did great things for me I can communicate better um you know I'm ready to branch out more to scale myself as a person across the world so I so that was those are two huge points that my character needed. I needed the pain, I needed the heartbreak mm -hmm. or that to kind of fully blossom. Yeah. Yeah. And so what would you say to someone that's kind of in that space now where they're vulnerable, they're in the pain and they're moving through it? Uh <clears throat> I would say the same thing. So I would take a look, which is extremely difficult at the time. I, I completely understand that. Um, but to take the pain, and what I always say is when you feel pain from a breakup is to try and use shit. Mm -hmm. So you, you try new creative things or, you know, go out with friends more, uh, see new people, see new places, travel on your own. All the kind of stuff that, you know, elevates your soul, um, that genuinely makes you happy on a soul level prior to being in relying on that relationship and that person as your purpose. Yeah. So that would be my advice. Mm, yeah. And what would, I would love your advice further or your insight rather on, you know, <clears throat> when you are in that place where you're feeling good and you're kind of on your own and back on your feet and you've kind of established that, that space of, yes, I can travel on my own and I'm doing my day in and day out. How does one, do you believe in kind of this practice of opening yourself up to love again, or just, is it just living your life and allowing whatever wants to come in, come in? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. All good. Uh, I, I would say it's more about opening yourself back up to love because if you don't do that, then, you know, like a genuine relationship is not, really going to be able to find you <clears throat> um <clears throat> sorry excuse me just dying over here yeah <laughs> <laughs> um someone get him some water 
Well, I've got wine. But... I have wine too. We're so we're so on the same page. And I normally never drink wine for an interview. And it's like, you know, three o'clock here in, in my time. And I was like, I think I'm supposed to have a glass of wine for this interview. Five o'clock somewhere, right? Yeah, perfect. Well, I knew it would be for you, apparently. Okay, great. Well, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> um, so opening yourself up to love. Sure. So I think that's crucial to actually finding love again is to being, so one of my quotes, uh, you know, explicitly states that, that you should trust in love once more. Because if you don't, um, and you carry on living your life, you're going to be holding that vibration of your past, Mm. of your past hurt and all that kind of stuff and not being open to attracting love again. I like that. And I, I like that you say trust and love once more. And so that once more is, is kind of giving that space and that openness to be like, let's just trust and let's just, let's just go for it again. And it, it allows us to be more in that future frame as opposed to that rigidness or that tightness from what may have happened in the past. So trust and love once more is to be more like, okay, well, the past sucked us. So, but if you do it, just open yourself up once more again, and I'm sure the universe will prove you wrong. Mm. Yeah. I like it when the universe proves me wrong. <laughs> does it happen often? <laughs> uh, yeah, it does, actually. Um, yeah, it hasn't with love in a little bit. But I'm, universe, you want to prove me lo- wrong with a lover? Let's do it. I'm here for it. Um <laughs> Yeah, but I find that with my my like business and career goals, it tends to, because um, sometimes I can get a little beautifully stubborn, and uh, it'll often prove me wrong. But I find in relationships, yeah, maybe I want to open up to that more. Universe, prove me wrong. Prove me, especially <laughs> like prove me wrong with what I think I should have, because and then you know what's going to happen. The universe will be like, all right, Danielle, we'll prove you wrong, and they're going to send me someone that's five five. And I'm like, okay, uh, not that I, I really am not superficial or into what the physicality should be, but I always, since I am tall, I always say, well, I would like a tall man. Yeah, sure. So does, does the universe normally provide tall men? Yes, it does. So it hasn't proven me wrong yet in that way. So continue to, to provide bless me with the tall men and then <laughs> Something else. Prove me wrong in a fantastic way. It's going to make me say, ooh, I'm so glad you did. I, I think all the times that the universe has proved me wrong, it's always been like for my own growth. Mm, in a way. Yes. So I'd be like, this is what I want. And the universe is like, nope, why well, you can't fucking have that because this is what you should have. Right. Right. And it brings beautiful perspective. <laughs> when you can see it that way, you know, which can also be part of the journey and part of the growth and part of the initial temper tantrum, if you will. Yeah. I think at times you get clouded in the, well, it's almost like a, <clears throat> almost like uh, having a child as a soul mm. where you're like, no, but I fucking wanted that toy. Why right. are you giving me this? Mm-hmm. Totally. I have a teenager uh, in my soul. So <laughs> yeah, my inner teenager, that's like, but <laughs> <laughs> but I had a crush on that one. <laughs> I don't understand. I wrote in my journal how much I loved him and how cute he was. <laughs> Why is he with her? Cheerleader. But then did it provide you with something better? Oh, it did. Of course. Um, okay. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. So much better. Uh, and now I'm in the space where I, I think I'm much more, selective initially so I can kind of see more off the bat what isn't in alignment and just continuing to move through as opposed to before I would be more like well let me prove myself wrong or let me give this a chance or let me explore it further when that was really never and that almost became my lesson in a way it's like well no Danielle you didn't actually need to explore that that wasn't part of this you just we're too afraid to even keep going. Yeah. So that's been a, that's been a thing, <laughs> but, <laughs> but not right now. Right now it's very open. It's just me and my glass of wine. So, um, same, same, same. same. Yeah. 
So uh, this, uh, it must be the, what's going on for Leo's right now. What, uh, what date is your birth? It's on the 20th. Uh, of July or August? Uh, August. August. I'm yeah. A little, I'm a little older than you. I'm on the 9th. Oh, okay. Okay. I know. It's always funny when people, you know, you're the same sign. You're just like, oh, what's your, whoa, what date? And then it's like different. You're like, okay, cool. Going well, nowadays it's like, what's your rising? What's your moon? Yeah. Well, I know. So I'm actually Leo moon and Leo rising. And Leo sun as well. Mm-hmm. So I'm Leo, Leo sun, moon threat. rising. Yeah. I'm a triple threat, triple fire. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's explaining a lot more. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't think I've ever met someone that's a triple Leo. Yeah. We're, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a unique one. I'm a rarity. So... I, I haven't met a triple Leo myself. I've met triple of some other signs, but uh, not Leo. Okay. I'm a Scorpio rising. Pisces moon. Oh, that's where all the sensual and... Yeah, I get that a lot. Yeah. Everyone's like said, that's where the sexy shit comes from. <laughs> yeah, because I dated some Leos and like, they're fun, but they can be a little dense. Um, yeah. yeah, I find that, I find... and. Again, I'm because I'm so Leo in that way. Um, although my Venus and my Mer- Mercury are both Virgo, which is a little bit different. So, um, but I find that whenever I'm with a Leo man, and I try not to go down the rabbit hole of finding out the rest of their chart before I really get to know them, so I'm not uh, making assumptions. But um, when I've been with a Leo man based on his sun sign, I find that there's a lot of initial chemistry, but then it very quickly just kind of tapers off and they they uh tend to not want to go there with me so to speak especially when i want to talk about more ethereal things yeah. so i can see the the pisces it's quite thing. common nowadays though isn't it that people are like oh no i, I looked up your chart already before they've actually been on the <laughs> it's very common yeah um i yeah it is and i i it's almost a little invasive yeah definitely i've got a friend that actually she carries a tarot deck in her purse and she went on a date Uh and the the cards fell out and i said so you take a fucking tarot deck on a date with you and she was like well how would you know and i was like uh human interaction body language um just communication like a normal person yeah let it organically unfold (laughs) yeah but she was like well no i'm just gonna ask the universe Uh, way easier no the universe will fuck with you if you do that (laughs) you know what i mean like you want to do that and then you're gonna pull the devil card because (laughs) that's what you're doing you're meddling yeah i I I mean, I love looking at birth charts. I think it's a beautiful thing. And when I am invested in someone, I want, and I know them and I've, you know, I've gotten the time to get to really organically understand their energy and be in a more sensual place and be in a more connective space where I feel like I know them. Then it's like, okay, let's sit down and look at our charts and like, let's unpack this and let's see the different layers and flavors and see why, oh, that Mm. makes sense, you know, because you do this and I don't know. I just, I find it to be a really fun kind of treat, if you will, to wait. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you feel about that. <coughs> we'll cut that out. <laughs> Take your time. It's okay. No, I'm good. I'm great. <laughs> okay. okay. Beautiful. But yes, that's my, that's my thought process on charts is it's almost like sex in a way for me. It's like, um, I, you know, if we're not going to, like, I'm not going to have a one night stand with you. And I'm also not going to just read your chart right away. It's almost like, let's, let's connect first. But, okay. So <clears throat> if you were to read the universe, so let's say do tarot cards uh-huh. or look at their chart, would that influence how you would interact with that person prior to meeting them? A hundred percent. It would. But wouldn't that change the dynamic of the relationship before you've met them? I mean, so are you saying could it enhance the experience? Uh, it, or either way, really. Um, I mean... Because technically you've created a new timeline where mm-hmm. you actually know all about them, whereas in the other timeline you didn't know anything about them. True. I guess for me, because a lot of the work that I do with clients is intuitive, I do look at people's astrology charts, 
because that's so connected to my career and what I do for a living, I find that when it comes to relationships, I almost want to leave that to the side. And I guess that's why for me, I want to wait to unfold that because there's a part of me that's almost just like, it's so what I do that I want to be a little bit offline and okay. just so, be open to their energy for the sake of being open to their energy and yeah, kind of practicing that muscle. So that's how I see it. But I understand what you're saying with kind of creating these two different dichotomies of, okay, the one you can look at their chart ahead of time and you can kind of look at all the different faucets and you can kind of um, be excited about certain pieces of it, but then at the same time, almost like for foreshadowing or warn yourself. And in some ways that could be helpful, yeah. but I just think I would lean into it too much and I'd almost use it as a crutch. And that's just me personally. How would yeah. you feel if you got to look at their chart ahead of time? Uh, I think if I did it, I would, it would make me create a persona about them prior <laughs> to actually meeting them or right. knowing them. That's if I hadn't, if I didn't already know them rather. <laughs> Um, sure. And also, it would it would tell me things that um, would either reaffirm mm -hmm. their energy um, that I could sense from them. Uh, I'm I'm also the same. I like to pick up on people's energy, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm observant, so I like to pick yes. up on the small details of same. what they do and what they say. Mm -hmm. uh, um, <clears throat> So, but a chart, I mean, you throw a chart in there or you throw uh, a like a tarot. preconceived idea about them in there and that could change the whole dynamic of yeah. what I think about them. Yeah, I still think, I mean, there was a time I, I think about someone that I was, I went on a first date and somehow it slipped that I could read charts and he had never even looked at his birth chart before for what he, you know, all he knew was that he was a Virgo and, um, and he was like, Oh, let's look at it. Let's look at it. And I really didn't want to. And I did anyway, just because I didn't want it to be awkward and like make it weird to be like, no, I'm not, you know, we're not, yeah. you know, I, I just was like, okay, this is a few years ago. And I, I, I was like, all right, let's, let's take a look. And, you know, I was doing it and it, it it's weird. It's almost, it's interesting. It's almost like, I, it's funny. I've never thought of this before, but like when a guy is like, Oh, let's look at your chart. It almost feels like a guy wanting to be like, let's like go all the way. Like let's like almost like pressuring me into having sex, but it's like, not, it's so different because it's your chart, but it's almost like the same energy of like, no, I don't want to go there yet. Like I'm not ready for that yet. And that's kind of like what I felt like when I was, I never made the connection. What I felt like when I was reading his chart, I was like, I don't want to be doing this with you yet. Like, I feel like we're not there yet. We're not like, lubed up enough so to speak yeah i think there has to be that strong connection as well for you for mm -hmm. you to want to look at that per mm -hmm. person's chart True. because inevitably you see a future with that person before they're even being a future that's why you're looking at the chart mm -hmm. right. right so or you're seeing that there is a future depending yeah. on how you frame that Right. And in this case, I actually was seeing there wasn't a future because I think that was part of it too. I must was feeling a little bit let down because it was going really well. Then we yeah. pulled up his chart and then based on his chart, I was like, oh, like this is <laughs> ooh, like, yeah, like great for someone else. But for me, this is like not a match. And I guess, you know, again, you could say in some ways, great, you knew ahead of time, but it was, I guess there was a part of me that was like, let me just be in this for the sake of being in it without any tools. So sure. to speak. Did you give him the talk after that? <laughs> uh, no, I like, like, wait, the talk in what way? Like what talk? Like the talk, like, did you let him down gently after that? Like, yeah. he's really great. Like you're really great. But... Yeah. So what happened was I did, so I did the talk or what did we do? We, we ended the date and I just ended it. We didn't like, there was nothing, no, no kiss. It was, he dropped me off. And then he asked me out again and I kind of let him down gently. And then he was like, no, I'd really like to go out with you. And so I was like, all right, let me give him a second chance. So I went on a second date and then what happened was we wound up kissing and then there was connection. And then I told him I still wasn't sure and he just kept pursuing. And then we wound up dating for five months. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's what happened with that. I, it's like, uh, and now I get, you know, looking back, it would have been much different. It would have literally been that night would have ended. He would have done a follow up and I would have just been like, you know what, this isn't the right fit. But that was something I had to learn then. Yeah. You know, what did that teach you? 
Oh, it just taught me to trust my initial intuition and to trust that this was enough for what it needed to be. However, there's more and to believe in that moreness and to let this one go. Yeah, sure. And um, yeah, I think now practicing that has been much better because it's almost like your emotions will fool you if you don't, um, if you don't follow them initially. Yeah, sure. Energy is eternal. That shit don't lie. No, it doesn't. But you can, you know, you can try to manipulate it or it gets confusing. And again, when the physical gets brought in, you're kind of like, all right, well, you know, yeah. you're good with your tongue. So that's something. Usually if I get like a bad, <clears throat> not a bad feeling from someone, but mm -hmm. if just, if the energy just isn't mixing very well, mm -hmm. then you can kind of tell straight away. Sure. Uh, and I mean, if you're more in tune with that, uh, or if you're more intuitive, mm -hmm. then so you can spot that a mile off. Yeah. Yeah, you can. I mean, now I'm at the point where I can tell within like five seconds. Do you ever get that way? That's, fast. that's too extreme. It's, that's extreme. It's, it's, it's quick. Um, but it's been pretty accurate and not just with uh, romantic. I, I found it with other individuals as well, whether it be colleagues or even friendships, just this kind of knowing yes or no. It's very immediate now. Yeah. Sure. I think, well, energy is how I like to gauge everything, uh, mm -hmm. other than, you know, how I previously mentioned uh, sure. communication through body language and gestures and all that kind of stuff. But energy, like even during sex, I mean, energy is how I gauge what a partner likes, what a partner doesn't like, uh, if they're into it. And so I kind of base it around everything because it, it kind of is what the universe is comprised of. So, mm -hmm. and we can often miss physical cues and verbal cues but if we tune into that then we can pick up on what our partner likes what our partner doesn't like a hundred percent and we can kind of feel it in and out as opposed to always needing to rely upon the gorgeous tools that the universe has provided us like tarot like astrology different things it's like they're great but you know what's even better is the own energy conductor that you possess and to yeah. Yeah. to play with that and to practice it and to read and embody someone through that energetic um, way. It's yeah. powerful. That's good. I love it. So it's good talk. Um, <laughs> question. Um, well, I have, a, I, I have a couple more questions, but I guess, you know, one of the things we were talking about, yeah. So this, you know, we were just talking about that kind of energetic, um, read from someone and, and how you would kind of gauge that to move things forward. Is there anything that you, so from your perspective, a lot of our listeners are, well, we have male and female listeners and I guess, you know, gender doesn't really apply anymore. It's more about the energy and the essence. So if someone's in a space where, you know, we, you had mentioned, you know, trust and, and would you say trust and more again? Is that what you said? Uh, Trust in love once more again? Yeah, trust in love once more again. And so is there something that someone, you know, like you said, energy doesn't lie. Do you feel like there's something that someone can do to help kind of allow their energy to be in more of that magnetic open space? Uh, that I would say going back to more things that make you happy on a soul level. Mm -hmm. Um, going back to creativity, I mean, when I, I had gone through a breakup in 2010, mm -hmm. the end of 2010, and I had started to do more creative stuff, and eventually, you know, I got over the breakup, but I'd learned all new skills to get me through that um, stuff that I liked. And also, I, I somehow managed to find more, more poets through that experience. Mm. Yeah. So I think opening yourself up to love means you need to go back to the basics of finding what makes your soul tick and how you find love on a soul level, as opposed to finding love from other people, uh, whether it's for security or whether it's, you know, validation or appreciation or just because you desperately need love. I mean, yeah, it all begins from within. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But not in like the, 
to sell sort of sense. Not in the cheesy way. Not in the cheesy way. Yeah, I mean. no cheese here. This is a <laughs> this is a fine wine kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about energy from the from the space of yes, um, beauty and a good glass of wine, amazing cup of coffee, that kind of energy. Yeah, uh, the, the finer things that make your soul tick. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, whether it's like traveling or finding your sense of adventure from that, mm -hmm. uh, cooking, writing, painting, uh, reading books. Um, I feel like, you know, when you're in that, the heightened state of pain is when you're the most transformational. Mm. Uh, all of that shit comes out that you really wanted to do. Yeah, you can finally do it and, 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 live it and embody it and play with it and be curious. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And let it be simple too, as well. We don't have to overcomplicate that either. I think sometimes we get too ahead of ourselves when it comes to that also like, Oh, well, I'm going to be creative now. And so da, 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 da. it's like, no, just, just be right. Just be present. This idea of what we were talking about, Definitely. even with meditation. I think another aspect of being present is so recovering from the breakup is the, we often tend to be focused on the past, like in regards to something that you mentioned earlier, uh, like thinking of your memories of a past breakup, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, of a past relationship. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're so focused on that and fixated on that, that you pluck out, you cherry pick all the best parts of that mm -hmm. and they become that relationship. Mm -hmm. And that stops you from being able to focus on a future that you think is better because you're so fixated on the past. Right. Uh, meaning that you don't live in the present anymore either. Mm -hmm. It was a, a big issue if you're trying to manifest uh, a partner that, you know, checks all the boxes. So that's a lot of the sadness lies in that. I mean, I've been through it. I'm sure many other people have been through it. That uh, we, we always assume that the past is better than what's ahead of us. No, it's not the case. We wake up every day with a beautiful opportunity to create something magnificent, to create something even better, to create something even more in alignment. And we have the power in the beautiful present moment. We have the power in the moment we wake up. And so I always, that's why I really cherish my mornings because I know that for me, when I cherish my morning and it starts off with kind of doing the things, as you say, make your soul tick, it makes for a really beautiful day that allows me to be present and that allows me to focus on what the day has for me. And from there, like you said, that kind of flow, that manifestation, things from a futuristic progression perspective or frequency yeah. start to catch. Yeah. Yeah. It's a I good think place. once you start flowing at that kind of vibration that, you know, the past wasn't the best part of my life. That mm -hmm. love wasn't the best thing that ever happened to me mm -hmm. is when you start to attract, uh, you know, new people or new things into your life, new opportunities. When you stop holding space for that exact thing that you think was the best thing of your life, you redirect the open space to just let new things in. Yeah. Let the universe prove you wrong there. Be like, no, that wasn't your best lover. No, actually, that wasn't the best day of your life. This, this moment, this opportunity that you're in now, open up to it and there could be something really juicy. Yeah, definitely. I like it. All right. So this has been our talk. It's been great. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Of course. I really appreciate you. So I'm going to... I want to read one of the poems that I like from you and just get your take on it before we let you go. Okay. Sure. okay. So this is from your book, page 112, and it's called Morning Stretch. Speaking of mornings, like I said, I just love kind of curating some juiciness in the morning. So you're right. I love her most in the mornings with her messy hair, sleepy voice, stretching out like a lioness, and that look in her eye like she could eat me alive. Period. <laughs> I love that one. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Why? Why do you like that? I like. Oh, I just. I, I feel like I need to look at it again. Uh, well, I love that you said lioness, the Leo and me. But I love because that's to me w something that I savor 
with my own self and with partnership is that. So for example, in the morning, I could wake up alone in my bed and I would have that feeling, waking up with my messy hair, waking up with my sleepy voice, stretching out and looking at the day like I could eat it alive. And so if there's a partner in bed with me and it's that same notion, yeah, it's, definitely. yeah, it's, there's just something about that energy and that momentum. It's the, the realness of that moment is, mm-hmm. you know, you slept together and it could be, uh, you know, like either partner steals the mm-hmm. covers or, uh-huh. you know, there's like limbs everywhere yes. and it's just, it's an authentic moment. But then you wake up in the morning and you open your eyes and then it's like, you know, it's morning, it's Christmas morning again because yeah. uh, your lover's there and you you get to see them in their natural state and you still love them in regardless to, you know, having no makeup on or whatever. So it's kind of like, it's, you love their genuine self, which is their soul. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you see them stretch in the morning, um, which is always nice. It is. It evokes something. There's a a rawness and a realness and such an appreciation for being able to be the one to see someone in that state because it really is often behind closed doors that you see that side of someone. Yeah, that's reserved and it's only for you. And I think I always loved that aspect. Mm -hmm. Uh, that no one else sees that, you know, the yawns, the morning stretch, the, the rubbing uh, of the eyes, yeah, the hair all fucked up and shit. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, me too. I really do. So that's why that's one of the ones I appreciate that I wanted to share. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> well, thank you. So keep us posted whenever you want to share what the secret book is of yours. Oh, I will. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping to get, uh, a first draft done in the next two to three months. So it should be, I'll have more news on it, okay. but it's something that I've been contemplating about writing uh, for a while now. And there's been a bit of an outcry for it as well. Hmm. Well, I look forward to it. I'll have some more news on it soon. Okay. TBD. <laughs> TBD. TBD. So, so Scorpio rising of you to keep, your public work secret from us right now. <laughs> See, now I know so much more now that I know your whole uh, little, well, your triple anyway. I don't know your whole triple. Yeah, well, I, I, my uh, Lilith is um, Gemini, which I recently oh. looked into. And then I was like, fuck. There's your inner child right there. Yeah. 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 Mine's cancer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> but I love I, what I will say I love about astrology is it always keeps revealing itself to you. You can never fully ever be complete with your chart. It's always going to show you so many more layers and evolve with you and reveal new things, which is one of my favorite I parts. So. I, I recently got into human design uh, mm-hmm. in the last two to three months and I haven't really looked into it much. I kind of mm-hmm. skimmed over it. Mm-hmm. And I, I just found that absolutely fascinating the way that I was like, it's so spot on and I've only scratch the surface of human design yeah i feel the same way with that i'm a manifesting generator yeah what are you uh i am oh shit i'm a projector a projector okay (laughs) (laughs) that's why you forgot um (laughs) (laughs) cool yeah i agree i've um i've only scratched the surface with it as well but from what i've gathered it's been very useful. And I notice I, I pull from it, even just the small bits that I've taken. There's moments throughout my week where I'm like, Oh, well, remember, you know, you're a manifesting generator and you do things in this way and, you know, d- notice the way you did that, et cetera. So that's a cool one too. Yeah. My, uh, my profile, uh, was the martyr heretic profile. And mm-hmm. so I read into it a little bit and watched a couple of YouTube videos and it makes, it made a lot of sense that it was like, you know, you trial, you trial things, you do trial and error a lot, basically. So, which is, I do that a lot. You know, I test things out. Like I was saying about my own poetry, uh, I try to push the boundaries to see if it will work. Mm-hmm. That's so, so interesting. That pretty cool. Yeah. Well, now I feel like I want to go watch some YouTube videos about mine. <laughs> 
I think you should. <laughs> I'm going to the inner teenager in me is like, well, now I want to do it too. Take the wine with you. Okay. Well, yeah, I still have some left, so I will, I'll go down that rabbit hole. Uh, well, thank you so much, Anu, for taking the time to chat with us. It was really interesting to hear what you had to say. And like I said, I've really admired your work from afar. And so it's just been nice to have a more personal connection with you through this. Well, sure. thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you. So tell me, did you love this episode? While I may not need your validation, I certainly love it. So go ahead and make sure that you are following or subscribed or have reviewed this podcast in whatever app you listen to. And let's support the show by supporting each other. Share this out with a friend or someone that you know would just love to have a juicy listen. I adore you. You're amazing. Thank you.